Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the folder permissions on Synology NAS's shared folders. So if you'd like to limit access or you'd like to grant access, we're going to go through everything in this video to make you a little bit more comfortable on the permissions that every user will have. Now this is probably going to be a pretty quick video, but I do want to say that there's a bunch of other permission related things on your NAS. So we're looking at access to shared folders in specific. However, you can limit access to applications and you can specify specific quotas, but that's really stuff for a different video. So I really just want to highlight the shared folder permissions in this video because they're very important. This is what your users will have access to, and this is the most important thing, in my opinion, to fully understand. So we're going to hop into DSM and we're going to edit a shared folder. So this is a shared folder that already exists, but you'd be able to specify some of these permissions if you created a new shared folder. So when you edit a shared folder, you're going to see at the top menu bar, there's going to be a label that says permissions. And if you click that, you're going to have three distinct permission groups. You're going to have local users, you're going to have local groups, and then you're going to have system internal users. Now system internal users are exactly like it sounds. These are users that exist for specific applications on your NAS. For most situations, you're not going to be modifying any of this. There are specific scenarios where you might have to, and an example of that is Plex um, on DSM-7. But for the most part, you're not really going to have to change any of this. We're going to be focusing, however, on the users and the groups. So the important thing to understand here is that you can be granted permission through a individual user account or through a group. So what I mean by that is when you go through and create a user account, that user is automatically added to the users group. So the first thing that you have to understand is that whatever permission that users group has, the user that is part of that group will have that permission. The exception to this is if you specifically state that a user should not have access. So in the individual permissions section, if you state that they should have no access, they will not have access. Now the same is true for groups. So if you state that a user group should not have access to a resource, you cannot individually grant that user permission to it. So it's basically a little weird in the sense that it looks at the denial first. So if you deny access, that user will not be able to access any of those resources. However, if you grant access and you don't specifically state that the user or the group should not have access, then they will continue to have access. So to reiterate what I just said, because I acknowledge that it was a little confusing, if you specifically state that a user or a group should have no access, so physically checking off the no access button, they will not have access even if you individually grant them access. Now keep in mind that unchecking everything does not remove their permission. So if you run through and you uncheck everything and a group grants them permission, they will have access to that resource. We're specifically stating if you select the no access checkbox. So in an enterprise environment, you generally permission things out on a group basis. So what that means is if I have a backups folder here, I would create a group that is called something like backups users or something like that. Um, and I would give that group permission to this shared folder. And whenever somebody needed access to that shared folder, I would add the user to the group rather than going in and individually specifying that they should have permission. Now that's an enterprise environment where there are potentially hundreds or thousands of users. In a you know, home environment on your NAS, you might be managing five users. So it's you know, somewhat ridiculous to have a different group for every single user. But you do have to try and forecast where this is going. So if you do think at some point that you might have you know, 10, 15, 20 users accessing your NAS, it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and create individual groups. However, if you're only going to be managing a few, you can go through and just give it on an individual basis. The one thing I'd say is you have to make sure that you're giving access to the user and then you're giving the proper group permissions as well. Now, if you head over to the advanced permissions section, you're going to see three distinct checkboxes. So the first is disable directory browsing. If you disable directory browsing, no one's going to be able to access any of the files other than administrators. I'm not sure in what situation somebody would want to use this, but I'm sure there is a scenario where they might want to use this. So if you log in as an administrator and this checkbox is enabled, 
you will have access to those files. However, all of the users that have permission to this folder will not. So they won't be able to browse the directory, they won't be able to see any of the files. It in essence just removes the permission. So it's a weird scenario where they still have permission, however they can't see anything. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. The second checkbox will allow you to disable the modification of existing files. So if you have a bunch of files in there and you don't want them to ever be changed, they're for viewing purposes only, this would stop users from modifying any of those files. Now keep in mind that this will not stop them from uploading new files. So basically whatever exists there, they won't be able to modify, they won't be able to delete. But if they wanted to add new, if they wanted to create a file, they can do that. They still have that permission. Finally, the last checkbox is to disable file downloading. So this will allow users to open FileStation and view any of these files. However, they will not be able to download them to their local PC. Now, the one thing that I really want to highlight here is that this only applies to FileStation, FTP, or WebDAV. If you try and access these files using something like SMB, you're still going to be able to do everything that you normally can. So if you have permission to it, then you would be able to navigate it, you'd be able to download it, delete it, do whatever you want. These advanced settings in no way, shape, or form will change any of that. You'll still be able to do everything. This is only for FileStation, FTP, or WebDAV. So this can be paired pretty well with Synology's uh, login portal. So if you set up a FileStation login portal and you send that link out to your users and you ask them to log in, they will have all of these advanced permissions set up. So if you don't want them to download the file, they won't be able to. So that's a good option if you'd like to use any of these settings. Now at the bottom here, you're gonna see the advanced share permissions. And what's funny here is that Synology gives you the option to modify these. However, they have a note at the bottom that says we do not recommend you enabling this option. So this is what you can implement if you want to try and limit access on services like SMB or AFP, etc. But with Synology's disclaimer that you probably shouldn't use this, you have to keep that in mind. So there obviously are situations where people are going to have to use this. However, for the majority of people, you probably aren't going to have to implement something like this. Finally, for this, there is the NFS permissions. And NFS deserves its own video. I'm going to try and uh, keep this short. But NFS allows you to give permission to a specific host name or IP address. So it's a device. If you want to give permission to one individual device and that device has a static IP address, you can set it up so that that IP address has access to that folder. I'm assuming that the majority of people are probably not going to be using NFS. You'll most likely be using SMB. And in that case, the advanced permissions are ultimately how you can limit access. But once again, Synology doesn't suggest you do that, so you should probably just set the permissions the way you want them to be. I acknowledge that this was a lot of information for something that's relatively simple, so I'm going to try and break it down in a few short sentences that hopefully make some sense. If you want an individual user to have permission to a folder, you can either add them to a group or you can individually give them permission to that folder. If you want to remove permission for an individual user, you can either remove the permission from the individual user themselves, or you can remove it from the entire group. Just keep in mind that since the no access checkbox will completely remove their permissions, if you remove it from a group, none of the users in that group will have permission. This is one of the benefits to managing permission on a group level, because at that point, you know that whoever's in the group has permission to the resource, and whoever's not in the group does not have permission to it. If you'd like to limit permission on applications like FileStation, you can do that with the advanced permissions. And if you'd like to limit them with SMB, you can use the advanced share permissions. So one final thing to be aware of is just because we're looking at the permissions on a folder level, that does not mean you have to manage every single one of them on a folder level. You can open up the individual user or group and edit them there. It just allows you to do it a lot quicker because you're going to be granting specific permissions for every single folder for that user or group rather than modifying every folder to modify that group, if that made sense. So hopefully that broke it down a little bit and it makes a little bit more sense. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.